you can see, we've uh, we've got the Dremel out. I've got the uh, bar locked in the vise so that the chain can rotate around the bar freely. And what I'm doing now is going through and setting the angle and cleaning up the teeth, putting a little edge back on them with the Dremel. Now this kit. Uh, I'll have to look up the number, but um, it is a Dremel kit for sharpening chainsaws. And they have three different size grinding stones that go with this kit. So, um, what you do is set the angle on that little metal tab that's hanging off to the side. And these are 30 degrees, so you, um, you line up that line even with the bar, parallel with the bar and it gives you your uh, angle and all I'm doing is running through there and just cleaning up the edge you get into dirt or you know rocks or whatever it'll chip them teeth and they won't cut through uh, cut through the wood cleanly and you just you just clean it up advance it move it on to the next one and we'll just go around that whole deal now the files that you see uh, is the same way, I don't have to dig one out, um, it's, it's got an angle uh, gauge on it too, but uh, you just do the same thing only, you know, with no power, run that file back and forth till you clean the teeth up. Now when these teeth get down to the back side and call it, you know, create a triangle, uh, you don't want to keep cutting anymore, it's time to replace the chain. Uh, so this chain's got a little life left in it. And if you notice on the front side, where I'm grinding, on the front side of that is an anti-kickback dog. And in case it digs in too far and gets a bite, It'll make that saw jump out of the wood, and it could get you. But I've taken and ground some of them off. Not on this saw, I've got another bigger one. Um, and it's got a wrist brake on it to stop the chain, but... Um, when you take them off, good grief. It takes off shavings like somebody's whittling. And it'll flat go through a, a log. But for safety's sake, we leave, we leave most of them on there. And that's all we're doing is cleaning up the edge. And we'll go through and uh, oil it up when we run it. And uh, the metal that's in there will clear out with, with the flushing of the oil. Um, about once a year I'll go in there and take the chain off, take a little acid brush and take it to the parts cleaner and wash everything out and clean them up real good. Check for wear in the guide. Uh, if any of the guide around there is actually bent or chipped. You know, just general maintenance. There's that 30 degree mark parallel with the bar. Oh, what else? That's pretty much it. Um, I'm just going through and cleaning that up. See some of them are sparking pretty good and um, taking quite a bit of metal off. And there's a couple of shots of what the uh, 
what the chain teeth look like when you're uh, done sharpening. As you can see, it's nice, nice and sharp again. That Dremel does a little good job of it. It's the the kit number is actually a 1453 from Dremel, and this is the file that I was talking about. It's got uh, angle gradients on it, and this is actually an Oregon brand. So there you go. All right, holy y'all. Right, well, we got another one of my pile of saws. Uh, this one's been sitting a while. Um, I just went through earlier and sharpened the chain, and it's adjusted properly. Um, went in and adjusted the carburetor a little bit because if they sit a while, um, the fuel that's in there can be affected or your mix could be a little bit different. So I adjusted it to the mix that I've got right now. Um, let me get the uh, tool kit. What I did was ordered this from uh, Apex brand. Uh, I ordered it from Amazon. I think it was like ten bucks or so. Well, that was that was normal time prices. Um, but it's got a whole bunch of different adjusters. Um, I've had a couple of them that I ordered separate for other tools. So I just keep them all together. But it's got splines and the, what they call Pac-Man style, a single D. Uh, the splined, I think there's one in here for a screw, a straight blade. Um, it's even got the little bitty one for the um, for the new stuff that's out there. And like I said, it was like ten bucks. But it's good to have one of these kits around, especially if you got a different what, which is weed eaters and stuff like that. So what we uh, what we're gonna do now? It's been sitting and kind of dirty. Uh, we're going to go through cleaning it up, and this is what you do right before you put it in a case and stick it in the uh, stick it in a barn or shed for for the winter. Um, hopefully, everything will be ready through the winter. If you get an ice storm or something, you can clear uh, branches. But what we're going to do is take some engine degreaser. I got to find it. Of course, this is O'Reilly's brand because that's where my son works. And we're just going to hose it down. Well, there might be not much left. He's been cleaning his weed eater and stuff. There's enough there. It don't take much. And then we take... 98 cent dollar dollar whatever uh, brush and we just try and run through there and get get what we can get the vents get the the body as much as you can reach if you like you can use toothpaste br or toothbrushes um, like I said, toilet cleaning brush. You can have a whole set of brushes to clean with. And now we will uh, we'll hose it down and. I turn the water on. All connections are uh, weather sealed on this new stuff, so you're not going to hurt anything by washing it down. Guess who's here wanting a drink? I got two dingbat puppies wanting to play in the water again. If nothing else, they love summer because I think it's part bird dog because of the because of the way they like to play in the water.
Well, we just get it a win once over, get the fins cleaned out. We're not trying to win a car show with it. This is all good maintenance to keep up, keep the longevity of the saw going. I even know guys that take a WD-40 and we'll spray them down and then stick them in a bag. We don't have to get that crazy. Unless you're that thorough and then that's acceptable. So that's it. We'll stick it out in the sun and let her dry out. But uh, that's just cleaning it up. And like I said, um, once you uh, once you get it there, we'll stick it out in the sun and dry it out, and then I'll go through and spray that oil, the chain down, and everything again, so we don't get any surface rust. But that's just uh, that's the cleanup on it. Um, like I said, this one's sitting around a while, so I cleaned it up and tuned it up. We got big chores coming this weekend. A lot of a lot of the communities gonna come up and help get firewood. Um, We'll fill a trailer first and that's what goes to uh, the preparedness festival so keep watching stay tuned we'll get more on this uh, I think the next thing we're gonna do is I've got a saw that uh, it won't um, it won't accelerate uh, kind of dead in the water it gets there and bogs down and it will not cut uh, I got another one that did not want to start so we'll go through and check some troubleshooting tips on that. And uh, yeah, we'll just plug. Um, I guess this one, we can show you how to operate. This one's got an integrated throttle coat, uh, throttle stop switch on it. So you click it all the way up. On some of them, you're gonna be adjusting the carburetor all the way to choke. Uh, this one will go up. There's no prime bulb on them. I've got a pull and it's got a prime bulb. Um, but you set that up and this should, this should start. Okay. Squeeze the trigger. It, it started sputtering. Squeeze the trigger and it'll reset back the throttle. switch so I guess I'll get some coverage on that uh, close up so you know what this saw looks like but uh, that's pretty much it we'll stick it out in the sun let it dry out and on to the next one so all right guys here's that pooling I was talking about we're gonna adjust the chain up a little bit on it you got a little slack to it and then we'll uh, run through the sharpening get her tuned up there so what I'm going to do is adjust it I'll get the close up on it but that's adjusted up and then we just lock the bar down again See, that's that tool that actually fits this saw, not that other uh, home light that I got. All right, that's adjusted up. We're gonna go through and clean this one. Means I don't have any more degreaser. Um, we're just gonna spritz a little, uh, little dawn on it. Just to cut the oils. But like I said, all connections are usually safe, uh, weather sealed, weather packed. And uh, aside from submersing it completely in water, probably don't want to do that. But. It's okay to wash them off.
There's that prime button I was talking about for the carburetor. Because it's the carburetor's up here and um, the fuel is down there, so you would have to actually let me think. I think that's the fuel. Anyway, it would have to pull it up, and that's what you're doing with that prime bolt, just to get fuel up to it. Well, this one was certainly oiling good. I'm going to have to pull a bar off and do a close-up of... Uh, how the oiler works. I think that would be good. day's work huh all right this one be ready to go I just I went through all of these saws uh, yesterday in the heat of the day I don't know why but um, this will probably yeah it'll probably start I'm hoping There it, put it puttered. Now we'll set the choke off. Oop. It's cold blooded this morning. Maybe I have to prime the bulb some more. Let's try it one more time. I think I got any in the air filter. Uh. Alright. We'll let it dry out. Okay, so that pooling that didn't want to start. Um, we decided to pull a carburetor on it. It's never, never been off since it was new. So I got it off, and I'm about to pop the, the basically the pump side of it. Um, don't look bad in there. But it acts like it's starving for fuel. And I did find a loose fuel line on it. The screen, there's a screen right here. And that usually ends up getting plugged. That uh, that big uh, 240 home light I got, I took it apart the other day and uh, found a bunch of stuff just wadded up in it. This one looks all right, so. Yeah, you'll check that, and then these are the reed valves. Oh, the reed valve, all it is, is a flap, and this is kind of like a mylar piece, and it's got got a little bit of debris there, so we'll clean them up. But it actually will blow one way, and then when it when it has a vacuum, it sucks the the plate back over it, the little reed back over it and blocks that port. 
so it's like a one-way check valve pump so we'll get that cleaned up and then see what we've got helps to have a carburetor cleaner just to blow that stuff out of there blast it and of course your your trusty brush pretty clean to me. We'll get her back together and see what happens. Alright guys, guess what? We got her back together. Had to go through some adjustments. Of course the fuel mixture is different again. But on this saw here you pull the, the choke and Oh, I just had it running. There it is. Let's see if she starts now. There you go. Ready for a run. So I found a little bit of trash in that screen. I wouldn't think it's enough to mess with it, but apparently this saw is pretty finicky with that stuff, so um, we'll just put her back together and stick in the case, ready for the weekend. I probably ought to get a new, uh, a new filter for this one. I keep scrubbing the, the yuckies out of it, but it keeps tearing the felt. Oh well. Kind of oily, not dusty. So the oil's gonna, or the, yeah, it's gonna collect the, collect the stuff for it. So. All right, cover back on. Rock and roll. On to the next project. All right, so I figured I'd uh, show you. We took the little uh, echo apart again. Um, anyway, on most bars, they've got um, these little pass-through holes. And this one here has the oiler up at the top on that hole, but it'll pass through both sides. So if it goes in there, it runs around the chain and then it builds up back in here. So there's like a reservoir uh, holding oil to get back on the chain. And what happens, usually these will get clogged up. They stop oiling and your chain gets hot and stretches and all that fun stuff. But what will happen is it gets that dirt in there and you just got to periodically take it apart and clean it. Now this one, like I said, the adjuster is on the outside. And that's, that's the screw right here. And as you're adjusting it, it moves this pin in and out in that hole. Oh, right there in that hole to uh, move it back and forth and some of the other ones on the inside it works the same way but I'll clean this up put it back together and uh, looks like it'll uh, it'll oil it's been oiling so but I wanted to take it apart and let everybody everybody see what we're looking at and get some of that debris out of that bottom slot but 
All right. All right. One of the final steps is going to be your air filter. This one comes off easy enough. That actually goes through there and holds everything together. So this is going to just pop out. Um, these are probably not supposed to be clean. You're, you're going to change them out. Actually, it does have some thumb pieces here to separate it. If I can. There she goes. So it's got two sides of a filter, basically. So what we're going to do, take some soapy water, and uh, just to cut the oil residue that's off of it and clean these screens up and put it back on. That's basically it. it can be hiding in the back here's where the carburetor is on this one a lot of them are up in the head unit um, it's just nothing more than a filter on or a foam piece on some of them but that's uh, that's what it is we'll uh, get it washed up and put back on all right she just snaps back in place on this one it's always good to clean it in the spring, clean it in the fall when you put it away. And then if it's heavy use through the summer, then uh, clean it. Clean it as required. So um, I think that covers everything. Uh, next thing we'll do is a spark plug. Uh, check, make sure it ain't flooded or, you know, any water in it. And uh, Go back to the um, checking for spark, which is kind of tricky on a handsaw, but um, you just uh, put your spark plug in there, ground the ground to the body, and then when you pull it, should, the spark plug should spark. So uh, we'll show you that, and uh, that should take care of the troubleshooting part. Uh, we covered the cleaning when you go to put it away for the winter, so. Uh, guys hope you uh, hope you learned something uh, going through all the um, well not all the possibilities of problems on chainsaw but several of them uh, the at least the basics to check um, if you like what we do subscribe to the channel hit that like button and uh, notification bell for uh, future videos and as always, live that life done free. Thanks, guys.